Welcome to Maximize Life, the television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched, and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olawori. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast today. This is Maximize Life, where we encourage you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olawori, your host and the senior pastor of New Wine Church in Woolwich, London. Today we are looking at a message by Dr. Tayo Adiemi, the founding pastor of New Wine Church, who has gone home to be with the Lord. Today's message is titled, The Irresistible Force of Compassion. The Irresistible Force of Compassion. Be blessed as you watch this program. Take your Bible, please. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5. And let's read verses 13 to 16 as our foundation scripture for this series. Matthew 5, 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Father, we thank you because your word is alive. Your word is powerful. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And this morning, we pray that your word will penetrate deep into the innermost recesses of our hearts and bring your will to pass in our lives. Lord, will you anoint me to deliver your counsel with precision, exactitude, and accuracy today? And will you anoint your people to receive the word? I pray that every heart under the sound of my voice is prepared as good ground for the incorruptible seed of the word. We pray that your word will take root in our lives and bear fruit for your glory. Provoke us, challenge us, empower us, and release us to be everything that you have called us to be. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We're talking today about the irresistible force of compassion. You will remember that earlier this year, we started a conversation that I promised you we would revisit before the year was over. We called that particular series becoming a magnetic Christian. To refresh your memory, let me go over the key points from that series. First, we agreed that people are extremely important to God and so they should be to us. Each of us has been called to partner with God in bringing valuable souls back to him. Every single person in this life and even those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, every single person is precious, is valuable to God. They're valuable enough to him to warrant an all-out search. And when they have been found and brought into the kingdom, the Bible tells us that there is always great rejoicing in heaven. Those truths are played out in the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. In that particular series, you will remember that we developed a formula for becoming a magnetic Christian. How many of you remember that formula? Come on, let's do it. HC plus DC plus CC equals MI. I hear only four people. Some of you are going through your notes quickly. All right, let's run a test. What does all that mean? HC plus DC plus CC equals MI. HC is what? High concentration. DC is what? You got it. Direct contact. CC is what? Yes, clear communication. You're so smart. And MI is what? Maximum impact. Only the choir is born again this morning. The rest of you backsliding people, we're going to pray for you. High concentration plus direct contact plus clear communication equals maximum impact. 
based on our foundation scripture, the same one that we've used this morning, we reminded ourselves that we are already salt. We just need to make sure that our salt is sharp. We are already light. We just need to make sure that our light shines. As salt, we do three things. We make people thirsty for God. We spice things up and make a difference. And we prevent moral decay in society. As light, we clearly and attractively present the light of the gospel to people who don't know God. We have a responsibility to both leave the gospel and preach the gospel. Tell your neighbor for me, leave the gospel and preach the gospel. So that formula is our foundation for becoming magnetic Christians. HC plus DC plus CC equals MI. Potency plus proximity plus proclamation results in maximum impact. Well, in that series, that's what we did. We laid the foundation. We established the principles. Now we want to take those principles to the next level. We want to see how we can apply them practically in our day-to-day -day living. In this series, we're going to examine two powerful forces that God has given to us with which we can attract people to Christ. How many forces? Two. The first of those two forces is what I'm going to talk about today, the force of compassion. Tell your neighbor for me, compassion, it's irresistible. Find another neighbor and tell them, compassion. It's irresistible. Turn your Bible with me to James chapter 1, verse 27. James 1, 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. The Message Bible puts it this way. Real religion the kind that passes muster before God the Father is this. Reach out to the homeless and the loveless in their plight. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go too far in studying our Bibles before we encounter the reality that compassion and Christianity go hand in hand. They are inseparable. The significant place of compassion in our faith is emphasized over and over again all through scripture, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament. Let's look at a few scriptures very quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 11, for the poor will never cease from the land, therefore I command you saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy. In your land, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor, and your needy in your land. Psalm 41, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Say it with me. Say, blessed is he who considers the poor. Say it again. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, there can be no question about it. When we pay attention and reach out to those who are needy, the Bible says we are blessed. Look at the promises in that passage. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. These are promises that God has given to those who consider the poor. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. It's unmistakable ladies and gentlemen. This issue is on God's heart. Matthew 25 verse 40. Jesus said, As surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen? When people practice Christianity without compassion, either as individuals or as an organization, you can tell that something is terribly wrong. Something 
is spiritually missing. Simply put, Christianity that lacks compassion is very unattractive. On the other hand, when we demonstrate our faith in action-oriented compassion, it produces a magnetic force that attracts people to us and consequently to Christ. Tell your neighbor again, compassion. It's irresistible. Jesus gave one of the most poignant lessons on compassion in a story he told in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 to 37. Luke 10, 30 to 37. When you start from about verse 25, someone came to him and said, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor. This guy got smart and said, well, who is my neighbor? Then Jesus began to tell that story. We know it as the story of the good Samaritan. In this story, a Jew is on a journey from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And in the course of his journey, he falls into the hand of thieves. They pounce on him, they beat him, they strip him naked, they rob him and leave him semi-conscious on the side of the road. After a while, a priest comes along and the man must have thought to himself, here comes a man of God. Thank you, Lord, you have sent help my way. But you can imagine his shock and utter surprise when the priest crosses over to the other side and continues on his journey, walks past him without even slowing down. Not long after, Another religious man comes along. This time it's a Levite. And horror of horrors, he too walks past this man without giving him a second glance. Eventually, the Bible tells us that a Samaritan comes along. Remember, Jews don't like Samaritans. And Samaritans don't like Jews. In fact, putting it that way is an understatement. They both despise one another. The ethnic strife and tension between them is so strong you could cut it with a knife but this samaritan stops climbs down from his animal leans leans over this wounded man knowing full well that this man is a jew knowing full well that this man doesn't like him he proceeds to administer first aid to the man the bible says he pours oil and wine over the man's wounds bandages him up lifts him up onto his animal takes him to an, an inn which would be the equivalent of accident and emergency, pays the bill for the man's care, leaves an undertaking that he will come back to settle any expenses that are due. Now, let's analyze this story for a moment. Number one, this Samaritan did not have to stop for this man at all. He knew that this man was a Jew. He knew that the Jews despised him. Number two, he could have stopped and given first aid on the side of the road and moved on and said, at least I've helped him a little bit. Number three, he could have even taken him to the hospital and said, I've done all I can. Let someone take it from here. But no, this man goes all the way. He goes above and beyond the call of duty. As my brother will put it, he goes A, B, C, D, above and beyond the call of duty. Now, can you imagine the kind of questions that would have been going through this Jewish man's mind? Who is this guy? Why did he stop to help me? Why didn't he just abandon me like everyone else has? Why did he go through all this trouble for me? And after all, he's an ethnic minority guy. Why does he care so much? Well, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? That's exactly what happens when we demonstrate compassion especially towards a stranger. We get their attention. They begin to ask questions. They want to see behind our act of generosity. They want to know what is driving us. What is the motivating force for the things we do? Who are you? Why are you doing this? What happens to them when they experience our compassion? They experience a magnetic pull, what I call the irresistible force of compassion. Tell your neighbor again, compassion. It's irresistible. This program will continue after this short message. I hope you are being blessed by this broadcast. If yes, I encourage you to contact me and let me know how we can serve you better. If you have any question about what you have heard on this program today or about life in general, do not hesitate to contact me. You can contact me by phone, email, or Twitter. All the details you need are on your screen right now. God bless you. 
Now, back to today's program. Nobody, nobody rejects compassion. Even the most hard-hearted people, they may not visibly melt before your eyes when you are kind to them. They may not even express any form of gratitude. They may even, as a matter of fact, intentionally display a hard exterior, a hard facade. But trust me, you have touched something inside them. Something has started to happen in their heart. Every time you demonstrate compassion, you touch a person's heart. Say it again, compassion, it's irresistible. That's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Acts of mercy open people's hearts. And that's why God mandates us to show kindness. It's an effective way of bringing the love of Jesus to people who don't know him. It's an effective way of communicating the gospel. And after all, what's the gospel? For God so loved the world that he gave. Look at how Jesus put it in John 13, verses 34 and 35, especially verse 35. He says in verse 34, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples. How are they going to know you are a Christian? Jesus said, by this they will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So is it logical to say that compassion is the mark of genuine Christianity? Is it, is it logical? Is it fair to say that love and compassion are proof of genuine Christianity? Absolutely. For people who don't know God, our compassion helps them to appreciate what God is like and why they should come to him. You see, God is love. But the problem is people cannot see God, but they can see love, love in action through us. So the big challenge today for you as an individual, the big challenge is where are you on the compassion scale? When was the last time your heart was broken by something that breaks the heart of God? Where are you? Where are you? When was the last time you troubled yourself, went out of your way to help someone in need, especially someone you do not know, someone who could never pay you back? When was the last time you were the good Samaritan in another person's life? We all know about IQ, intelligence quotient. We've even been taught about EQ, emotional quotient. But today, the question is, what is your CQ? What is your compassion quotient? And I, I want you to take this question seriously. So let's get down to earth. I want you to write down a number. A number that represents your compassion quotient. A number between zero, from zero to ten. Before you write, let me make it clear for you. Zero means your heart is completely cold. You don't want to know. You don't care. Like Millwall. Nobody likes you, and you don't care. <laughs> Ten means you are compassion personified. You are Mother Teresa par excellence. Now, I want you to be honest. I want you to write down your CQ, what your CQ is now. Not what it used to be, not what you would like it to be, not what you think it should be, but what it really is. Write a figure. Everybody, whether you are making notes or not, write a figure down. Somewhere between 0 and 10. And let me make it more exciting. You are not allowed to write the number 5. <laughs> so write down a number. I'm waiting for you. You don't have to show it to anyone. Just write it and hide it. No matter how painful, no matter how embarrassing, write down your compassion quotient. Have you written it? Okay, I trust you. Now take your Bible, go with me to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 3. And I want you to pay attention. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. How many people speak in tongues here? Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love. I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, 
And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is more than just a nice wedding passage. It is more than beautiful poetry. This passage here expresses what is at the core of God's heart. Now, take another look at that figure you've written down, your CQ. Look at it. Now, I have a question for you. If God is love and we are his children, made in his image and after his likeness, how come we don't demonstrate compassion more? How come our CQ is as low as that figure we've written down? Well, let me suggest four factors to you today. Four things that dampen and dull our compassion. I call them compassion killers. Four compassion killers. Are you ready? Number one, your environment. Somebody say environment. Ladies and gentlemen, our compassion can be dulled because of long exposure to an environment that is hostile to compassion. It could be the environment we grew up in. It could be the environment we live in right now. It could be the one we work in. You see, compassion breeds compassion. Love produces love. Mercy generates mercy. And by the same token, contempt engenders contempt. Hate feeds hate. Anger fuels anger. If you were raised in a loving home, then you are generally more likely to be compassionate. If your childhood memories are filled with love, laughter, acceptance, affirmation, security, then your CQ is likely to be higher than average. The same is true if your current home is healthy, motivated, loving, uplifting, caring. If that's you, you need to be grateful to God. And I want to encourage you, do everything possible to protect your heart to keep your compassion quotient. In fact, go one step further. Ask God, Lord, how can I increase my CQ? But on the other hand, if you grew up in a hostile, suspicious environment, or maybe you live in one right now, or you work in one right now, then you may find that your CQ is lower than average. If you never felt love from your parents, or maybe you grew up in a polygamous home, which was not an uncommon thing in Africa, if ever, uh, all you ever knew growing up was betrayal, heartbreak, suspicion, fear, hurt. Or maybe right now you work in an environment that is extremely competitive, that is hostile. A work environment that is characterized by a dog-eat-dog -dog culture where backstabbing is the order of the day. Then it may be an explanation why you are not a very compassionate person. But notice I said an explanation not an excuse that means you can still do something about it let's remember ladies and gentlemen that we are in the world but we are not of the world our environment can influence us but we can choose to be different we can rise above the influence of our environment say environment the second compassion killer is your lifestyle Sometimes the reason we're running low on compassion is the pressure of a highly charged, fast-paced lifestyle. Let's go back to that story of the Good Samaritan and let's take a closer look. Let me just ask you a question this morning. Is it possible that that priest who passed the man by, the Levite who passed the man by, is it possible that they were actually good people? Is it possible? Is it possible that they were kind and compassionate people? Is it possible? Yes. In fact, more than just possible, it is highly likely. After all, there were men who had dedicated their lives to serving God and serving God's people. So it's possible that they were good, kind, compassionate people at heart. But somewhere along the line, it seems that they got so involved in the busyness of pursuing their, their career that they lost their compassion. That warm, tender, compassionate heart of theirs gradually, gradually grew cold, grew hard, grew callous, and became insensitive. And I must say, the same can happen to you and me if we are not careful. We can come to the point where because we are pursuing 
the things of life will lose our compassion. I trust that this message has enriched you and challenged you to be all that you can be. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests about what you have heard today, do not hesitate to contact me using the details on your screen right now. And I will be glad to serve you as best as I can. Also, if you happen to be in or visiting the London, Essex, or Kent area of the United Kingdom, we encourage you to come and worship with us at New Wine Church. All our service details are on your screen right now. Well, till the next time on Maximize Life, God bless you. We hope you have been blessed by today's broadcast. For more details about the dynamic ministry of Dr. Tayo Adeyemi, please contact us using the details on your screen or visit newwine.co.uk.